First up, we have uh, Magewell and uh, Ryan Brenneman from the Director of Product Development and Support at Mobile Video Devices will be uh, doing the presentation from Magewell. And of course, I told Brian I would show this. Um, Ryan, sorry, I told Ryan I would show this, but uh, you know, Magewell does everything from the USB Capture Plus to the USB Fusion that we reviewed very recently in streaming media. And I, I have uh, several of these USB Capture Pluses that I have used quite a bit. This one I haven't used in a while. This is actually the DVI <laughs> model. I've not had occasion to use the DVI model in a while, but these are these are workhorse devices. So anyway, it's great to have you here, Ryan, and uh, just take it away. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me. As you said, you know, Magewell is known a lot for the USB capture market. And what you've seen over recent years is just um, new versions and building on that technical capability and expertise that Magewell is known for with the simplicity, the reliability, and the innovation. And today we're talking about Director Mini. Uh, this was recently announced at IBC in Amsterdam. And so this was announced as, as now shipping. It's in users' hands currently. And so let's go through the device because I, it's a really powerful device, very versatile device. As you see, it's an all-in-one uh, streaming system. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the I.O. of the device. Um, in terms of size, what you'll notice is you know, very compact. And so handheld, I would relate this to like an iPhone Pro size. Um, form factor, but you'll see that we have two USB-A USB 3.0 inputs. We have two HDMI inputs. Um, I don't want to get into the weeds too far as far as specifications. Just know that you can input a 4K signal into those and it'll downscale it to 1080 automatically. On the bottom, we have our Ethernet port, our USB-C, as well as our SD card slot. If we come down to the, the next slide, you'll see kind of some of the I.O. capabilities. So I've mentioned the USB and the HDMI, but also know that it has 3.5 millimeter inputs for both mic and line levels. It also has a headphone jack that's TRRS. You, um, you also have the capability of adding in a host of different IP sources. So it can actually bring in RTMP, SRT. You can output all of those same um, in addition, you can bring in up to three mobile phone cameras, and I'll demonstrate that live um, in just a little bit. But uh, it's another way you can bring um, additional sources into the device. On top of all of that, it can do uh, recording. It has two video encode modules. Um, so those can go to things like your SD card or to a USB drive, but they can also be ISO record or ISO streams via SRT for remote contribution. So I want to talk a lot about the device and walk you through that because our time is limited. But here's some real world use case scenarios that we've seen so far. And we're learning even more through our user group that's found on Facebook. A lot of chat is happening there. A lot of people sharing pictures of how they're doing things. And that's a really powerful thing about the box is that it, it is so versatile. So we're seeing a lot of use in high school and collegiate level sports live productions, whether that be remote feeds back into a control room or just an all-in-one production. We're also seeing a lot in terms of um, house of worship. So with the ability, as you'll see in a bit, to control PTZ cameras, uh, churches have picked up on this device and started using it. We've mentioned the remote contribution device. I have a quick demo for that. Um, also an on-camera monitor, because this is capable of both sending and receiving NDI HX um, signals. This is the perfect on-camera monitor to feed into a much larger production. And then another area that we're seeing um, a lot of uptick in is the public safety drone market. Um, getting a video feed from a thermal capable drone into uh, something like YouTube or even as a private um, stream. So without further ado, let's actually bring up the device and show you what's going on with it. So what you're seeing right now in the top side is just a duplicate screen of the device. The bottom would be our program view. And then on the right hand side, you're seeing something that I think is a fantastic way to control the device. It's the director utility. Now this is on an Android phone that we're seeing and you'll notice that we're presented with two options. I can serve as a remote assistant or as a phone camera. So for the time being, I'm gonna go ahead and tap remote assistant. 
what it's doing is it's looking for all the director mini units that are on the network. And so I can just simply connect to my DM unit two, and now you'll see all of the scenes are populated and I'm able to control this. The great thing about this is that up to three mobile phones or tablets can control a director mini unit. So I may have one person who decides to switch between the various scenes, right. or I may have somebody else who wants to work on just graphics. And now I have a graphic operator position Additionally, we're able to use the audio mixer to control various different inputs. And I have a lot of them turned down so they wouldn't come through um, and interrupt me speaking. But it gives you the option to be able to place director mini in, a, in an area that is convenient for hooking up cameras, but know that you can control those sources from anywhere through the local hotspot that it can broadcast. So you can have a parent in a stand doing something like a scoreboard. So speaking of different inputs, what you'll see right now is that we've got a NDI source coming into the device. Um, I also have an NDI source, um, a view of our lab here at MVD um, for bench testing products. And then I have brought in a pre-recorded video clip. You'll hear a little bit of that background noise come through. I have a static image with background music. I have an additional uh, background graphic from a recent production we just did talking with our integrator and reseller network. And then of course, I can add a whole host of other ones. And so I'm gonna make this a little bit larger so you can see that, but you can see we can add in a number of the, the HDMI sources, webcam, uh, pre-recorded video clips, photos, RTMP or SRT streams, the cameras, and then as well as the NDI stream. So very versatile device in terms of what you can add to this. I mentioned before about PTZ control. What you'll notice on the screen uh, is this PTZ button. And so this is something that engineering was recently able to um, unveil through a firmware update. And now I have the capability of recalling presets. So let's zoom in um, to something that we actually designed here at MVD. This is a holder for Director Mini, and we've made this available for the user group on Facebook. But now I can call presets um, and move the device around. The other really cool thing is that if I cut back over to my uh, phone view, you can see that now I have that same capability right through the phone. And so again, um, somebody operating a phone or a tablet can, can fully control uh, this device. So that's kind of our scene layout. You'll see that we also have the capability of a full audio mixer. And so let's bring that full screen so you can see that, but you can adjust the various different audio levels. I can set what mic I want to be um, designated as my, as my hard mic input, but I can also turn um, inputs on, off, or follow video as well. If I've added a source, um, I'll be able to preview that when, when I'm in and viewing that source, um, or I can edit any scene uh, that I want. So this video here, for example, had um, audio in the background, and I'm able to adjust that volume before I even go live with it. Um, this is the scene edit function, which again, very powerful layer type tools to be able to manipulate video. I can scale the video, I can move it around. I can add labels or frames to the video. The other great thing is I can set actions, what I want to do when the video is done. I can rewind it to the start. I can actually switch to um, various different scenes. Um, and so it's an extremely versatile way to bring in pre-recorded video clips, but I can also add layers. So now I have the opportunity for picture in picture, side by side. I can set um, my transitions or maybe even a play range. You know, maybe I don't want the full video to play. And now I can set that um, play range to exactly what I want it to do. As I mentioned, if I cut here to this background file, I've added audio, which you should be hearing now. And I can edit that audio right here. So I can get that set exactly the way I want before I bring that in. And we'll cut back off of that. Into the next tab is our graphic overlays. And there's a full suite of graphic overlays that are available. There's a lot of preset ones and also custom ones. So one of the things I'd like to do is show you one that I love is our countdown timer. So you'll see this countdown um, from 10 seconds, and what we're gonna notice is that 
uh, this will actually cut at the end of 10 seconds. It will take the background down. And I've told that to cut to the PTZ camera shot. And so if I come in here, I have these policies. And so I'm telling it then to switch to uh, which source or camera that's preset up in my show. So an extremely versatile way to do this, you can see I can move this around. I can change all of my colors. Um, I can even add sound effects to this particular graphic. So that, that countdown timer is actually something that's, that's pretty fun to, uh, to use. Additionally, we have the ability to overlay any transparent PNG files, as you see here with our Mageball logo. Maybe I want to put a logo on the left-hand side. Uh, this was actually from a church live stream that we did from outside in uh, testing a device. We've also built in several graphics. Um, let me just cut off here to the uh, program view so that you can see this full screen of what it looks like. Um, and so you have the ability to overlay those graphics too. We even have cool graphics like um, clocks that are built in. As you'll see, we have uh, list items. And if I come here, I can edit that list out. Um, I can plug in a keyboard and mouse over USB. Um, all of the USB ports are host controllers. So now I can use a keyboard and mouse to quickly edit that list. And then there's other additional. So we've pre-built in lower third examples. We have animated text that scrolls at the bottom. Um, and then you can add anything custom that you want. So I can just simply go through here and start layering on a bunch of dis different custom um, graphic overlays. Something else that's really neat is we've added in um, a telestration feature to the device. So I can actually draw right on the screen. I can tell it for how long I want that to remain up um, just by adjusting uh, these parameters here. Maybe I want to change the color to something a little bit different, uh, but it has a telestration control. And then furthermore, we can fade to black. We can freeze the scene. Um, in the menu settings, you have a lot of different options for setting your encode parameters. As I mentioned, we have two video encoders to this. And so you can set these to be various things. As you'll see here, I have the option of encoding straight from HDMI or webcam into a source such as SRT or RTMP or even an ISO recording. So very versatile system there. One of the other things that we recently just added is um, the LED backlight. So on camera use, um, we've now switched this not to be just LED indicators, but these can actually serve as tally lights um, in an NDI production where this is an on-camera setup. Of course, we have work recording capability um, to the device, and I can also select different shows. So right now I'm showing you the default show with a lot of different examples, uh, but I can switch this off to be a 9 by 16 vertical view or I can set other um, remote guest shows or maybe even a football example that I'll go to in just a few moments. So with that being said, I'm just looking at uh, Q&A here real quick just to see if there's anything um, that might be popping up. Um, yeah, we got one question from Patrick Kirby. Uh, yeah. He asked uh, what might be some use cases for this versus some of the other traditional uh, live streaming equipment. Sure. Uh, Versatility is one of the things that this device really shines with because it can serve as an encoder, a decoder, the number of different inputs that it has. Um, so I like to view this as kind of complementary. It's like a Swiss Army knife of video production. Um, it can do the full stream to uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. Um, as you see here, we have options of encoding to all of these different platforms. Um, so, and, and you just simply add a new one um, as you want to add into that. And you can choose that to be encode one or two. So just the versatility around the device is, is one of the things that I love the most about this. I'm going to cut back over here so I can change this, uh, this program because I want to show you one of the other use cases that uh, is centered around this. And this is um, remote contribution. So right now, what you're seeing is that I've pulled a feed in from the Circa Hotel. And um, this is actually a live feed. You'll actually see the cars travel on the highway. Um, but I'm able to pull this feed in um, 
using SRT without any port forwarding by using um, our control hub. And Magewell Control Hub is a, a software that was announced about um, maybe six months ago, an iteration of the original cloud product. But it basically allows me to create streaming channels. And within those streaming channels is where I can pull things in from. So if I cut over here, what we'll see is that I now have the capability of not only controlling these devices, you can see the, the Circa is an ultra encode, but if I come down here to channels, I'm seeing that as well. Now, the cool thing is, is that I can also encode simultaneously. So if I come over here and I'm gonna bring up this box here, and what we will see is this come through live. So I'm just gonna connect and we'll see this video feed start to come through. So right now I'm moving SRT both in and out of my studio right now using Director Mini and using Control Hub as kind of the interface to route those signals without any need for port forwarding. So uh, like I said, this is a, a live view of that camera. I'll show you here another one because I have a Director Mini that is up from Livestream Las Vegas. So their unit is online. And so I'm able to see that unit. I can actually uh, remotely control that unit. Um, they actually are feeding video to me. So uh, thanks Livestream Las Vegas for sending me a video feed. Um, what we'll notice here in the streaming channels is, yep, here's their, their feed coming through. Cool thing is I can view um, that feed and listen to the audio. But what's really powerful is this remote control. Um, and so I have the option to also take a look at um, all of the different, um, I clicked on the wrong one here. Bring theirs back up. And he may have taken that offline. Um, I didn't tell him I was doing this. This was uh, an impromptu thing. I saw his device come up, so I thought I would tag into it. He may have popped it off. Um, but you can have full remote control of the device. All of the devices feature a, um, a web interface to access it. And the cool thing is I can access the web interface uh, right from my web browser. So if I take a look here, I can see my IP address of the device. And so I can just simply punch in my IP address. It will load my interface. And now I have capability of switching scenes as well. I can add in any of my graphic overlays. I can look at my background music, adjust my volume, set my recording features, um, and also view recordings that were set live. As you'll see here at the bottom, this was the outdoor church service that we did. So um, from a remote contribution standpoint, the device is extremely powerful in what it can handle. So I am gonna switch again and change over to my football example. And let's go ahead and bring that up here. And let's start my stream out. So our program view at the bottom starts to go active. Okay, there we go. So what we've got right now is we have the ability to um, see this football program and it's really fast in changing this over. Now I have control of um, my cam up view or another picture and picture source. So one of the things that I love with this serving on top of the camera is that it's really easy for me to uh, be able to bring back a program feed from a larger production, something like feeding vMix, for example. And with this independent record or um, NDI transmit function, the encoder, now I have the option of putting this on top of a camera. The cam op will see the program view. So in the upper right corner, I'm just kind of simulating um, a return feed. Now the camera op also has all of his own, um, the ability to view where things are at. Within graphics, we can add in um, transparent overlays. So you can see right there, I've got that um, in. If I wanna add another one, it's as simple as hitting custom. I'm gonna come to picture. I can search my USB device, football graphics. And now let's just say I wanna add Timbrook Automotive. And I wanna shift this up into the corner and I'll scale it down just a smidge. I hit save and now that's available for me as well. 
So really quick to add graphics into this. And again, if I want to trigger that graphic right from the phone, I can do that as well. The other thing that you'll see is that we have a scoreboard. And so um, it's hidden behind on the duplicate view, but on the program view, you'll see that that's up. The other cool thing is I can control this from the mobile phone. So I can adjust score parameters. I can rename the game. So I just come down here to edit, and I can edit this game. We can do the home team as Kaiser. And we'll do this as point. And then I can choose graphics. So I just come through here through to my device. You're seeing that I'm selecting the device graphic. And then I can select the away graphic. It will feed into it, and then it'll insert those um, into it once it uh, once it downloads. So those are all ways to be able to utilize and control the device. And I know we're coming up on time. Um, haven't seen any more questions pop in. The device is available now. And uh, retail one, it is twelve ninety nine. So there's just so many different ways to use this thing, and I think that is the key takeaway. Um, we're we're seeing so many different use cases from it. Yeah, yeah, and it almost seems like it replaces a whole suite of devices for remote contribution. <laughs> you know. It does. Um, one of the one of my fave features is uh, the fact that on the back is Sony NPF batteries. So. You know, if you want something um, to last a little bit longer with two of the smaller size, you can get about three hours of uh, use out of it, depending upon number of inputs. But when you want to go all day, you just toss on two of these monster NPF batteries um, and now you're off to the races. And so I love that flexibility of the hot swappable nature of this. Um, also, you know, it comes with a sunshade for outdoor. And we also have people that mention things like, you know, just picking up a PoE um, extractor. And so now it's very simple on a network to just simply make the connection to the device and they get data and power for Director Mini over one cable. All right. And just real quick before we uh, jump over to I Golgi, um, uh, uh, anonymous attendee asked, what camera are you using for the Zoom? It looks super sharp. <laughs> That's an Obsbot Tiny 2. Oh, nice, nice. I should uh, I should mention here real quick. I um, I think we had a, a minute or so left. I want to I want to bounce this over because I didn't talk, um, and show this one thing. Um, it's the it's the phone camera view, and uh, I think this person, whoever the anonymous person is, will see. Um, yeah, we are up on really time. cool. We are up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. No worries. Um, no worries. Here's a, here's a setup. Here's a quick behind the scene looks. There's a tiny two. So really cool way to bring your phone into a production as well. Awesome. All right, thanks Ryan. Been great to have you.